This is the story of the Far East Broadcasting Company. It is the story of how God has used us to accomplish His divine plan to bring people all over the world to Himself. FEBC has been one of His chosen instruments. It is an ongoing story as we adapt to new opportunities to reach even more people and prepare for a future God has in store for us. More than anything, FEBC is the story of changed lives through Christ for God's glory, with millions of individual listener stories that encourage and inspire. In the highlands where China, Vietnam, Thailand, and Laos converge, live the Hmong people. Known for their simple lifestyle and strong sense of identity, the Hmong in Vietnam made international headlines when 300,000 converted from spirit worship to the Christian faith in the late 1980s. Reliable sources confirm that their conversion was the result of listening to Christian radio broadcasts through FEBC. The broadcaster they called their pastor was John Lee, a Hmong himself whose family was impacted by broadcasts from Manila while he was yet a boy. He visited Hmong villages several times to meet his listeners and to minister to them personally. They were his flock. From the beginning, FEBC's broadcasts have centered on God's love and forgiveness. Coupled with our tremendous presence on the ground and driven by a compassion for people as God opens opportunities. In March 2011, an 8.9 earthquake leveled a large section of Japan and spawned tsunami waves that decimated entire towns. A nuclear power plant experienced a devastating meltdown. Looks like um, some kind of plant there. Almost 16,000 were reported dead. Yet God used this disaster to activate the church in Japan to reach out to victims. And FEBC was there to show the great love of God by lending a helping hand. Our listeners have great confidence in the FABC and they keep listening and listening is kind of a support for their spiritual. Prayers were mobilized through FABC broadcasts worldwide. More than six decades of engaging human needs with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ and the transforming power of God's word have not changed the core values of FABC. Close to God close to people. Christ to the World by Radio has been, from its founding days, both a call and a message. In 1945, God led Robert Bowman, John Broger, and William Roberts to establish FEBC. Their mission was to use radio to proclaim salvation through Christ and a life of hope for men and women throughout Asia. From the beginning, we were driven by two things, a passion to obey God and compassion for people who didn't know Christ. Now we knew that this was the essence of the Great Commission, and we also knew there was no turning back once we put our hearts together. We had a few ideas about how we might do it, but God had other ideas. He first showed us that we couldn't do it, and that he would do it himself through us. In 1946, the founders went to China to launch their first broadcast. But within months, the communist movement, powerful and feared, swept through the country, forcing all mission work to shut down. Their next choice was the Philippines. Once in the Philippines, they quickly discovered it was the ideal place from which to broadcast into China. Thus, God guided the founders of FEBC. In 1959, this group of British supporters took up the task of establishing a station in the Seychelles from which they could broadcast into India, then Africa, and the Middle East. Over the last 66 years, 
God's Word has been transforming individuals, families, even entire communities and people groups. Even in the face of persecution, God was not restricted. He used radio to make His glory known to the people of China, Russia, Myanmar, Indonesia, India, Yemen, and many more, including forgotten minorities. All of them have been able to hear about the greatness of our God by radio. Today, FEBC has become a truly multinational ministry with 27 member countries broadcasting in 130 languages. Our programs potentially reach half of the world's population, many of whom live in the 1040 window, a section of the world most resistant to the good news. The growth of the church in the 1040 window can be attributed to a significant extent to the preaching of God's Word on AM, FM, and shortwave radio by FEBC, FIBA, and other radio ministries. The house church in China not only survived persecution during the Cultural Revolution, but even grew strong underground, largely because of the biblical teaching heard over FEBC, Bible readings, education speed, Bible studies, and the worship service. From the islands of Okinawa, Seychelles, and Saipan, Gospel messages carried by shortwave touched millions. Today, the message of the love of God continues to flow out from Bukawe and Iba in the Philippines through shortwave and numerous other AM, FM, and shortwave stations. With the advancement of the internet and other new media communication channels, FEBC is now actively remaking ourselves to take full advantage of these new, exciting opportunities. The FEBC staff has grown in number to about 1,000 worldwide, many of them speaking to their own people in their heart language. And listeners responded. More than 1.25 million responses were received in 2010 alone, many of them sharing stories of transformed lives. For the past 20 years, we have seen a consistent shift from traditional response channels, such as letters, phone calls, or personal visits, to more contemporary means. Text messages, email, posts on social networking sites, comments and discussions in uploaded stories and images. In 2011, FEBC's China Ministries online e-magazine, Embrace a Happy Life, has recorded over half a million downloads in the first year of this new distribution channel. Close to the listener has been our watchword for many years. We see this through their culture, thought patterns, beliefs, and interests. And now that we have an opportunity with mobile devices and social networking, we can genuinely get close to our listener. Increasingly, the younger generation is not turning to radio, but rather to new media to learn more about their world. Is God providing new opportunities for FEBC to reach a larger audience? Is this a picture of the future He has for our mission to bring people to Christ? God asked Moses, what do you have in your hands? The same question can be asked of us. What tools are FEBC using that are most effective in bringing Christ to the world. In the end, it is not about FEBC or the resources we use. It is about our great God who has entrusted His people with the mission to build His kingdom. From every tribe, every tongue, every nation, and every people group who will bow down in worship before Him.